Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Microwave Extravaganza Podcast, Episode Twelve of the <laughs> Filthy Rich Capitalists. That's and the, the name live. of this episode Hello, because I figured though, it makes sense. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Microwave Extravaganza. <laughs> um, my name is Arsian, as you all know. I am the sexiest angel on the internet because Castiel is not that interesting. Um, Castiel's and, a uh, bitch. What? Castiel's a bitch. He was cool when he first came on Supernatural. Now he's now he's nothing. <laughs> I believe that I believe the term for that is badass decay. <laughs> yes, and this is Filthy Heretic. Say hello, Filthy. Oh hi, I'm the Heretic. Yes, we will burn him later, but don't you worry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm wearing my fireproof it's... robes, by the way. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Um and then, of course, this is the most professional stream on the internet. Wink, wink. <laughs> Today, we are sponsored once again in part by a, the Jewish, I mean the Catholic Church. The, <laughs> have you ever wanted your faith to be more meaningful than it was before? Remember, if you believe in open borders, if you believe in personal sovereignty and the right to protect yourself, you're going to go straight to hell. So please, join the Catholic Church. Our po- open... Um, has been doing his very best to make sure that all the world's Jews, I mean all the world's Christians, know he's on their side. Wait, 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 one problem. Uh, our popes, yeah. our popes said that there's no hell. What the f***? Yeah, that, that was a thing like a month ago. You don't remember that? Oh, I, I, I for, uh, for about a month, I've been trying to design, and I'm so sorry, uh, um, volunteerist cap consumer, if you're listening to this right now, uh, I, re- I, f- I actually tried testing out one of my products that I was going to have you sponsor when I k- put up the Kickstarter. Holy sh**, I, I messed up royally on, on the pressure system. Uh, 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 just a quick thing. If I'm going to be putting this on my channel, could you uh, please not swear? It's just a stylistic thing I prefer to do. All right. Can you bleep that? Yes. Uh, that, that's, not, that's not hard. All right. So, oh, my God. Um, it was really, really. Are you Christian? I actually am Catholic. Oh, hooray, fellow! <laughs> uh, uh, I, I love how I love how so many people on the left will always remind us. By the way, did you know that there are pedophiles in the church? And by the way, did you know that there are pedophiles in the church? Oh, by the way, did I remind you one more time as I beat you over the head? Did you did you know that there were pedophiles back then? And you know, ignore the fact that there's plenty of them in in the school system. That's just not important. <laughs> It's just not important. Don't don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's like uh, the one place that's like more. You're, I think it's like not even like seven to ten, but it's like seventy to a hundred times more likely to be uh, preyed upon by a teacher than by a priest. Just <laughs> and for some reason we're okay with uh, having our kids there for forty hours a week. It's literally a full time job to basically be exposed to. Uh, a, bu- a a prison full of pedophiles. Great yeah. work. Great work, statism. Uh, well, Remember? here's the thing. I would be willing to have it where everyone would be communally um, um, asked to, to donate to, um, to, a, to, a, to an open-ended uh, ch- um, school, but not taxed. Well, here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing about uh, education, and this is especially true nowadays, that yeah. the... the like I've made my problems with the uh, Prussian model of education very clear, but here's Prussian? the thing: like uh, the Prussian model, you know, it's the uh, basis for which it's the uh, basis for which uh, our modern educational system is based on. I didn't know it was Prussian. I thought it was based off the factories. Uh, it's. I think it's vaguely similar in the sense that uh, it's designed essentially to mass produce minds and mold them into a highly regimented, uh, highly controlled, strict hierarchical system designed to produce obedience to authority and unquestioning compliance. That sounds a lot like what what someone... Okay, I get that you're going to call me a statist because that's what the blanket term is for everyone who doesn't believe in anarchy. But I really... I mean, you got to admit, there are definitely actual nuances between me and um, other people, you know, who are like, you know, Clinton and globalists and stuff like that. Oh, without question. There's no... Yeah. There's no... Don't worry about that. That's perfectly fine i was i my background was i was conservative and a minarchist myself so i understand yeah that said there's no way to quantify how big a smaller government is 
I think there's a way to quantify how, bi how much a smaller than now government would be. Not really. Oh come on! What about what about if we got rid of alimony? We abolished it as a thing. I think that would be good too because there's because I mean so few people know, know this. Alimony is not child support. Alimony pays for the woman to stay in the living um, conditions she is accustomed to. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna say like whether or not that's a bigger or smaller government. I mean, it probably would be a smaller a way to make a way to make it uh, a less intrusive in your life. However, I think it's a, a good. I mean, anything that causes a coercive monopoly to have less of an effect in your life, uh, generally a, a virtue. Well, you know, I actually wanted to get super rich, and that's part of the reason why I've been designing that um, these different machines for self-defense. Which, by the way, as I said to the volunteer, as I just mentioned to the voluntary consumer, um, who I'm going to tweet it later soon, just to let him know what went wrong. I was designing a pressure system for an injection device that would inject a neurotoxin into someone's body, and the neurotoxin was designed to um, only last uh, like uh, like two minutes. Although my chemist that I'm trying to talk to that I, that I want to pay, <laughs> he says he we, since I gave him since it's commission based and he hasn't made it yet. You know we're trying to make sure it doesn't kill the person. It's designed in case someone like a woman was getting attacked by a giant uh, dude, like a, like you know like a massive muscular dude. Wait, wait, and, wait, wait. Pro, pro, hold up for a second. You're designing an injection system to inject people with a neurotoxin and you're not trying to kill them? Well, I don't... Well, we, well we'll have other versions that can be um, dead, deadly, but this would be... You know, I don't want to cause someone death if we can just, like, make them, you know, unable to move their arms for, like, two minutes and then you could... And then watch as a police tase their, their balls. Oh, that's that's horrible. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Uh, the, you know how uh, psychotic the police are, right? Depends on who, but believe me, I have interacted with the police. I've interacted... It seems like the police that come at night, they know that they're kind of outnumbered in a dark corner, you know, with unpredictable people because people are a lot more drunk at night, so they seem to be a lot more friendly. But daytime police, they're assholes. Like, I, I've, I've interacted with them. Yeah, I mean, just, I, I've been thinking about making a, doing a thing about like police, doing more things about police brutality. Would you agree to like maybe like privately own? Sorry, privately managed, publicly owned. No. No. <laughs> no. Not even as a step forward. Uh, it's an unnecessary step forward, and if you think you can really like keep it, uh, pri if you really think you can keep it uh, public, I think you're. Uh, mistaken for the simple <laughs> fact that it's the uh it's the nature of the state to continuously grow and expand its influence well design well i think it's the nature of humans is to take more and more but the state is the only thing that can do that by force well the state is the only th is the only organization that can do this by force which is a power that they give themselves because they have a monopoly on arbitration you mean basically on violence i'm guessing is what you mean by arbitration it's more arbitration is basically the ability to to be the authority in deciding like what is right and wrong. Ooh, that's a that's a bit dark. Yeah. So when they can, so when they can uh, decide like private or that violating private property is wrong, except when we do it, mm. then I mean the the monopoly on violence comes from their monopoly on arbitration. But I think well, well here's one of the things. Here's the reason why I wanted to talk to you about judges. At some point, you kind of have to have that if you want to actually have a functioning justice system, where someone can say, "No, I don't agree with this judge. Let's go somewhere else," and that is, and that assumes they'll stick around. If you, someone commits a crime against you, or they'll even show up. Well, I mean, like that's that's going to be a, a thing for the free market to figure out, and we've already had examples of this being solved in the past. For example, uh, we have. We have the uh, system of Brennan Law in ancient Ireland, where a system of private judges known as uh, Brennans would uh, be contracted out to the private courts called Tuatha, and mm -hmm. everybody would want to have their case adjudicated by the most credible and the most fair, the most impartial judge they possibly could. And both parties would essentially negotiate on which Brennan specifically or which school of Brennan thought they would prefer to have their case adjudicated by 
naturally mm -hmm. you have uh say a criminal who's want to have the most fair judge and you're going to have a prosecutor who's going to want to have the most uh strict judge so and it's going to be the same way as any free market interaction with two people with opposing uh viewpoints where they have to negotiate on excuse me i wasn't finished where they have right. to negotiate on a uh somewhere in the middle well the, the problem with that is what if they don't like the verdict do they have to like sign an agreement that says we are we we agree to allow the courts to enforce force on us after the after the uh judgment has been um ruled or something the whole point of the court case uh, being taking place in the first place is that both parties agree to abide by the ruling. I mean, there's no way the case could happen without it. Yeah, but what if someone doesn't even want to face judgment and it's a complex case? If someone doesn't want to pay judgment, then it's entirely possible that the judgment could be done in abstentia. Abstentia. In abstentia, okay. like uh, if a person is just being completely stubborn and does want it, does not want it to be adjudicated at all. I mean, it's going to be very easy to make the argument that they're guilty and they're just trying to cover their ass. Oh, so what you're saying is you can go out and get your own justice if the person isn't willing to face trial. Very much so. And that makes it, uh, that gives the person who is a criminal a, uh, an incentive to want to uh, oh. particip or participate and negotiate for a better judge. This assumes that uh, if they're a guilty party, I mean, chances are they probably won't want it to go to trial at all since it'll be more costly for them in the end, since any criminal in a restorative justice system will undoubtedly be required to pay for the court costs of the uh, of their victim to have this case adjudicated in the first place. And if they're innocent, well, they're going to want this to uh, be adjudicated completely and try to become exon and try to exonerate themselves. I can kind of see that to a certain degree, but I think that it's more complex than that. I think there's more laws than just the non-aggression principle that would apply in multiple occasions. Well, the non-aggression principle is simply going to be the basis for uh, law. I mean, it's, in a way, like the way law is going to work is that there's not going to be a single legal code. It'll be a polycentric uh, legal system based on uh, an insurance model where individuals will decide like what protection they want and what it is that peop people are not allowed to have done to them. But what about the ability to go to school um, in, a, in a society where, you know, um, where it's all pri privatized? It may seem like it would be cheaper, but you, let's say someone's completely abandoned by their parents, which would probably be against the law, but you didn't catch them, and they have nowhere to go. And, you know, someone could say charities and whatnot, but even they are only so capable. And then you have um, an end balance of opportunity, you know. Like I believe, I don't, I don't believe we all should have the same outcome. But I mean, I think we should all, you know, be given the same chance to succeed, and then have our success be based on our merits. I I'm sorry, I don't understand the relevance of this uh, to the previous point we were just talking about. Well, but I'm saying it goes to the idea that it goes to the idea that some things should be um, guaranteed to be given. No matter what, and then if you and and that uh, that would be a law that I think would have to go into place. Well, that's I know a, it's a bit vague. That's a complete that's a completely different understanding of law than what I uh, described. What I'm describing is like a negative law that protects negative rights. You're describing a positive law that will necessarily come at the expense of someone else. Now, this could be done. What you're describing, you already answered my you already answered your own question that it can be done by a private charity. This can be done by all sorts of uh, people of goodwill who will almost certainly sympathize, who will almost certainly uh, like want to help this poor child who was abandoned by their family. And honestly, I think all our hearts would bleed for them. I think that that's a little bit more generous than you really under than is really the case. Because here's the thing: I've worked with the Republican Party of Wisconsin. I know this sounds like a bit of a tangent, but it's not. We, um, when it comes to donations, yeah, we're a political party, so people are less willing to donate. But I've also worked with animal rights groups and animal shelters, and there really is the 80-20 rule. And the 80-20 rule heavily reduces the amount of funds that can, eat, can go to someone, um, and to the point where it might even become ineffective. Money does talk. And money, and if one person, and by the way, if you have it where it's, um, where it's anarchy, 
I feel that there would be some some people who could actually reimpose the state by being wealthy enough to manipulate the emotions of the population. And that assumes that, you know, people that we don't, that if we were to try to put in, in an anarchist, um, uh, I don't want to call it a state, but a uh, um, nation or whatever. Anarchist society. Anarchist society, thank you. We That, that we would even be able to prevent people from uh, killing each other depending on how fast we... Uh, how fast we transition you know if everyone just said if it just happened overnight we'd probably all start fighting you know we'd have to do it slowly uh you're asking we're, we're going way off topic here Sorry. but i'm saying i'm saying like when it comes to the actual sufficiency of of private charities while they do good to do a good job with each dollar the total dollar amount usually adds up to a lot less be, which in some ways is good but in other ways isn't really that good considering how much it takes to run a school, how much it takes to um, to get someone educated enough to live in this very, very heavily, rapidly increase, um, ad- advancing society. It, it just seems almost impractical. Well, again, you're we're going off topic here. So if you want, if we, if you want to talk about schools, I'm happy to talk about schools and how schools yeah, yeah, might yeah, run yeah. under an, an, an anarchist society. All right. Well, also, do you think that this was kind of just a bad point that someone made? Because this has been on my had for a while when it comes to courts like i think dapperton says said this or at some point which you know that should tell you a lot as it is uh but he said like one of the biggest problem one one problem that uh not the biggest one of the problems with um with courts nowadays is that like you see all the uh people the civil servants they get to like park in front while everyone else has to walk my response to that was that seems like a really lame point to make especially since we know that judges see many people on a daily basis probably more than we do but they're in a position where they have power with um because if you're a judge that automatically makes you a person of power you see many people and many people may not like the rulings that they make they have to be well able to get inside secure doors with security right away you know it's just kind of a safety thing yeah and i'm not really against it i mean you can say the same thing about a uh, a corporate ceo having uh, parking spaces like right next to the front door. Yeah, I just want to get that out of the way. It just was something that was boggling around my head. I thought it was a really stupid point. <laughs> it's it's kind of a it's it's kind of a silly point. Like I get where he's going with that in the sense that civil service civil servants have uh, privilege, but I mean it's not really uh, it's kind of one that makes sense. And I yeah. can understand the logic behind it. Like you're I think you're right about that. Yeah. And so, now, so let's talk about the uh, whole. Um, you can go out and get justice for yourself if someone doesn't show up. What about the chance? What about the chance that you know um, that maybe you do it yourself anyway, and you just say the person would would have never showed up in the first place? If you say the person would have never showed up in the first place, I doubt uh, any. I doubt any uh, judge who wishes to retain their credibility would even entertain that case. Well, how would the judge enforce that? Like, would he have to like pay a, sh- a lot of money to a private security company to hunt you down? No, we just say get out of here. So you'd be abolished from the land. No, no, no. He just say like get out of my courtroom. There's no, but, there's no judge, there's no judge that would, uh, there's no judge that would even enter that would be, that has any concern about their credibility would uh, entertain a case that you're trying to do without the other party's knowledge. Yeah, but I'm saying if he can't like, put you, if he can't punish you for the same th- for something that would be also considered a crime if it broke the nap, because I think that does kind of break the nap. If like let's say um, that person escapes and isn't the nap for immediate uh, immediate danger? Uh, let me ask you. Let me answer that question with a question. Suppose, sure. and this is an example I've heard before. Suppose I steal your bike, yeah, and this is done while you're at work or something. And mm-hmm. I take it away, mm-hmm. and then uh, so it's gone. You don't know what happened to it. You call yeah. your private security company, and they're not able to come to a resolution. And so, as far as you're aware, it's gone. So then you're driving home one day from work. You decide to take mm-hmm. an alternate route, and you see uh, your bike in my yard. Yeah, yeah, and it. You go out. You can tell that I'm. I'm not. A, I'm not there. You inspect it just to make sure it is your bike. You recognize all the scratches and scuff marks that signify that this is definitely your bike. 
Are you justified mm-hmm. in stealing it back? That's, but that wouldn't necessarily be the same thing. What if I just decided to wait till you got home and shoot you, and then take the bike? I'm. That's that's that's, that's, that's a different. Are, that's a different question altogether. I'm what? asking. That's a different question altogether. I'm asking: Are you justified in stealing it back? Sure. It's it's your property, and it was stolen from you. So yes, you were stolen. So it is entirely legitimate for restitution of the non of violations of the non-aggression principle to. Uh, be delayed for a bit. There's no expiration date on justice, basically. Except, what if that person, um, what if that person stole from stole something from you, but you were in immediate danger, and then your retort is to shoot him? That's because that because the... because that that would still, you know, be you, um, taking it out, uh, taking it, um, are you trying to get justice back? Because maybe in your mind, that person will continue to steal, and you're putting them down. For good. That's why the resp- that's why your response for non uh, non aggression principle violations have to be proportional. I mean, at that yeah. point, you're at that point, you're significantly escalating the situation and causing harm in excess of what was caused to you. And I doubt that there would be very many uh, private security agencies that would be willing to say that your actions were justified, especially if you waited outside my house to shoot me, and then yeah. steal your bike back. Like at that point, like my private security agency would just be like, "Okay, you owe us money now, bitch." Yeah. But even then, even then, it, uh, fulfilling, um, like if they said you owe us money, I just never chose to pay you back. If you, uh, I believe that's a question of like, a judge would rule that, uh, say you've been found guilty and now you owe me restitution, and you chose not to pay it back. Like, what would happen? Oh, you then you'd have the justification to shoot me, or to no? That's it's more on the lines of society has a justification for not uh, doing business with you. Essentially, you'd be blacklisted from society. Huh. So what happens is that, uh, say you're a bike thief, or rather, mm-hmm. I'm a bike thief. Let's make myself the target here. So you can prove that I stole your bike. And this bike is important to you. It's like two hundred dollars, but mm-hmm. you weren't be, during the course of the investigation and the trial. You weren't able to use your bike, which uh, prevented you from being able to go to work. So, mm-hmm. plus you had to pay the cost of the investigation of the of your private security agency, and the co- and the cost of the court fees. So that all adds up to say I don't know two thousand dollars. That number is arbitrary, by the way. Just saying that I would owe you $2,000 and I choose to not pay it, then what would happen is that uh, all of society would know that I am a bike thief because you're all part, because they're all networked with the uh, private courts. And what would happen is that if I went to buy a cheeseburger, the local Burger King would know that I'm a bike thief and in order to preserve their own reputation, they would want to not do, want to do business with me. Well, but there is a bit of a problem there. That's assuming that they would all cooperate. And if you can get enough people, even if it's very, very few, to say to cooperate it and uh, with you, um, then you could probably still continue living on without ever having to pay restitution. Especially since people are not as rational or as moral as you might think. Have you ever heard of the uh, Stanford Prison? Well, actually, everyone's heard of that. But of course. A, okay, so. I, there's also, um, what was it called? Um, there's also, like, I think, I forgot what it was called. I think it was, no, no not the McNaughton test. This is the test insanity. That's totally different. Um, what was it? Oh, I can't remember what the name of the experiment was, but what it was is there would be an actor paid um, to sit in a room with fake electrodes to his body, and a real participant would be told by a real scientist to um, ask him some questions, and every time he got it wrong, give him some more shocks, and it would keep the voltage up, even, and, and, and to keep, and that the person could leave at any time, but even if, um, he, but he, the person would keep asking to go higher, higher, even if they're saying, I want to, I want out of here, and uh, they seem like they're going to, uh, going to die, you know, and it tested morality, and people kept going and going and going, even when you could tell that they didn't want to. And they were never forced um, by anything. The guy just wore um, a suit and a lab coat underneath it to make him look official. Yeah, I know. I know about that experiment. Uh, 
You know, you, it, you don't remember the name? I don't. I don't. I'm actually terrible with names, so I would not remember. But right. I know. I know the experiment you're talking about, and that experiment showed that the power of even perceived authority is extremely powerful and causes people to uh, feel that it's justified in killing someone. I mean, after all, they they're essentially outsourcing their morality to the authority figure. And this yeah. was largely used to explain how it is that perfectly ordinary people in, say, Nazi Germany could function in a concentration camp. Well, I mean, after all, they they weren't uh, morally culpable. They were just following orders. For them, yeah. that was probably a legitimate justification. Yeah. Oh, but, and... uh, but in terms of how this is relevant to uh, what we were talking about, I can't say it's quite clear. Well, the first thing is, first off, let's say that maybe, well, so, what, first thing is the general point was that, in general, morality isn't always secure with human beings, and so, and you'd be heavily relying on people um, all saying universally, it's immoral to do business with this person, even if that person was very good at um, smooth talking with a silver tongue to people, even if he was, even if he had, like, maybe, like, some like uh, dirt on these people for things that are not actually crimes or even morally wrong, but um, but he but but they lived in a society that didn't like X, Y, and Z, like you know, and and they could essentially do the same thing back, you know, you know, because humans are emotional, and the the and actually that was the main point. It was that humans are very emotional; they're not always as logical as I think they would need to be for but, what we're talking about to function. Hold on a second. If people are willing to substitute their morality for perceived authority, wouldn't mm -hmm. the established credibility of the judges be all the justification they need to uh, not do business with someone? It depends on who they care about more. Like, what if they care? What if they care? Um... Well, here's the here's the here's the thing. Uh, for a judge to even be able to keep their job as a judge, their incentive is to be as fair, unbiased, and uh, credible as possible because if they aren't then they're just going to be bought out by other judges that are willing to do these things so they're going to well, be, the chances are they're going to be like the most uh like very, perceived as very uh high very credible very fair and very uh i already said credible people in society I could see how a judge might how how a judge could use like maybe like dressing very very well and having certain symbols on certain areas of his clothing, um, talking in a certain manner to kind of give that emotional feel. This is a, as I am authority or whatever, and we can make the courts very 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 bold and um, and uh, and um, classic looking, which would definitely give people more emotional reasons to. Uh, look at them as authority, but even then, what about the authority of the ma of the mass public? Like I said, what if this person has, like you know, like what if they found out that this person was non-monogamous? Now, let's say they never were married, they never cheated, they just like to go to sex dungeons, but they were willing to throw this out to the to the public um, if that person did not do business as with them. You know, that is yes, bribery, but it you know actually well blackmail. But it's not putting that person's life in immediate danger. It would, it would. I think that would not only follow the nap, um, like at least on a technical level, but people would probably be more afraid of. You know, there's this thing from Machiavelli where he talks about how it's better to be in favor with the people than it is to be with nobility if you have to choose one or the other, because the mass public will always be able to override the nobility if pushed hard enough, while the while the nobility um, can still hurt you, but. You know, they can't do as much if you have the public on your side. I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay, so let's say someone had the ability to send out a whole bunch of dirty pictures of you having like really um, not um, raunchy um, BDSM style um, gangbang sex to all sorts of newspapers. And, uh, and because newspapers have to make money, um, messed up stories like that even if they're just harmless, and even if it's all consensual, get the papers going. And they said, you. this person said, you do business with me because this judge said that I'm a bad person or I ruin your life. You know, I ruin your life from a public view standpoint. So are you talking about judicial corruption? 
Yeah, you know, like blackmail. Okay, you know, so like, you're, like, so you're worried that a, a judge will abuse their power oh, to essentially blackmail people. Oh no, not not a judge, but like let's say they said like, okay, so everyone has been told by these judges that I'm a bad person, which means that all the people who don't want to do business with me that I need to do business with in order to survive are people who sell houses or or, or you know or maybe apartments, people who you know um who maybe have access to large amounts of food um and people who have access to potential electricity or or wi-fi i could probably sneak my way into a lot into um into a into a library that's like you know um that's like you know like a christian library or something and get new and borrow wi-fi there oh it i could probably blackmail someone in the housing projects if i find any doubts that you know maybe it he never was ashamed of this in the past, but kept it to himself because he knew other people would shame him for it. That he like that he likes BDSM, and you know I'll tell the whole public, and they'll emotionally react and laugh and scorn and mock him, even if they choose to continue to do business with him, even if they still think he's a good guy, they'll still make fun of him and shame him, practically into um, tears. I could blackmail him and tell him, "Let me rent here, or else I give." The press an extremely juicy story about you that will make uh they'll make you um you look like a fool to the world i'm not sure i understand like are you worried that the uh person the, who the, is the, the person the judges will not be enough so you're worried that the person uh will attempt to blackmail uh people into doing business with him yeah and what i'm saying is i think there's more 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 holes if if uh, if it's mainly just choosing to not associate with someone, then you might perceive. No, I understand humans are extremely social, and actually, it is very true that um, you can feel um, physical pain from being emotionally re rejected and uh, ignored by society. So it's definitely a huge survival thing. But the same rules can re apply in reverse. And who's to say that if someone didn't have some kind of dirt on you, filthy heretic, like? I'm not saying you have anything bad, but let's find out. Let's just say you did something, I don't know, something that doesn't actually harm people, but most people would mock and laugh you at laugh at you for. If that person sold that story to the press, that doesn't put you in immediate danger, but it might but it might bully you away. It might make you feel like you'll always be embarrassed to go outside. You know what I mean? People will make fun of you and mock you and stuff. You know, that's something that can be applied right away in reverse. I, I you're you're I, I don't understand. You're just a, you're gish galloping on this s scenario that you spent like ten minutes trying to describe, and I'm no less uh, able to answer it. I'm sorry. You know, I'm I'm I guess I'm not doing a very good of a job of explaining. What I'm trying to say is, uh, per, if, in, in twenty words or less. Okay. Um, if the only punishment for um, um, not cooperating with the private courts is uh not the word exile but um ostracization that doesn't seem like enough to keep some to uh to, to coerce someone course is a terrible word but for lack of a better word coerce someone into paying um a fine it doesn't seem like enough that's that's someone's probably can correct me on that but that was 28 words i know I, I I tried to give to twenty words the best I could. All right. So, anyways, uh, as as long as it was less words. Mm -hmm. Well, the simple the simple fact of the matter is that uh, it's not just not being able to buy a house or buy a uh, a burger or buy clothes or anything, but any dwellings that you already live in, electricity will be shut off. Your water will be shut off. Uh, you're probably going to be evicted. You're probably going to. Uh, have a hard time having or even keeping a job you're gonna have a very basically just a really difficult time uh, participating in society and given that society is largely going to be reputation based having that kind of a uh, damage to your reputation is I mean that's the question of whether or not that's worth say two thousand dollars or not or not to you is something that you're gonna have to make I mean like this can all be though that's the point of the two thousand dollars that you have to pay that back or you're basically stuck with this uh stuck with this stigma and no one's going to want to do business with you if you and publicly. if you pay back to t publicly yeah and if you if you're able to pay back to $2000 it means that you made a mistake and you're willing to uh make the corrections needed 
kind of like confession or something you know you you tell you tell someone who can't technically see you but they can hear your voice pretty much even then even then even then it just seems like you're already, like, you're already, you're already explaining it yourself that uh social ostracism can be uh just as damaging as physical punishment and you not, have you have instances uh you have studies of people who in isolation experience the same anxiety and stress as people who are being physically tortured so you're well, essentially is, isolating people you're essentially uh isolating people from society and doing nothing that would require any sort of coercion at no point was uh the bike thief or myself uh coerced into doing anything this is just people choosing to voluntarily associate which implies the right to disassociate from me as well yeah but there's ways of not using force or violence to coerce people into associating with you anyway uh are you going to bring up the blackmail example in well, which case i mean in which case wouldn't society be more outraged that uh you're using blackmail than what it is that you have blackmailed them on well people can be mad at more than one thing at a time i mean look at how many people hate both trump and hillary mm -hmm. so you know the the whole idea behind the blackmail would be that even if people are even more mad at me for blackmailing you uh, let's say i was i was the one who did it and you know you owned like you know a housing project that provided food and water and it um no not not food sorry water a water and the utilities and uh and i and i bribed you sorry not bribed but blackmailed you and the second i do that even if i look worse for it you also probably will still carry the reputation and you will probably think about you not me or about you know the fact that you sold something to me if i keep my mouth shut while there um in your browsing project you might be more willing to allow that to happen versus watching as i get hated more but you become part of um hates as well people are you sure me. are you sure people won't uh hate the owner of the housing project more for violating the blacklist well that depends on whether they think whether you think you can get away with um hiding me or whether you can stop me from of course you can't of course you can't of course you can't you're gonna have you're gonna have comp you're gonna it's a free market so you're gonna have competitors who are going to salivate at the fact that uh, you're hiding uh, someone who's been blacklisted. What's gonna happen is that they're gonna they're gonna advertise that they're gonna leak that to the media, they're gonna run stories about it, and you're that's gonna be you're gonna be public what? you're gonna be publicly humiliated. Well, that that that's only if they even find out. It's like, there's plenty. Like, you know, well, that's... You're, well, we're already we're already operating in the realm of hypotheticals because uh, that's you've true. already you've already operated under the assumption that uh, the person who is running a housing project happens to, or the person who is running a housing project happens to, uh, have done something, and the person who is blacklisted knows about it, which is already a a pile of assumptions. So it's safe to already make some assumptions that there's going to that this is going to be found out which I find to be a far 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 more likely scenario because we already know that there will be competitors they will salivate they will be watching each other they will figure out ways to uh, identify blacklisters mm -hmm. and this will be uh, incredibly incredibly humiliating even more so than figuring out that uh, someone visits a BDSM sex dungeon on Saturday nights or something, and even then, it's just like the person, the person who is uh, being in a housing project probably comes out looking better for standing up to someone who is trying to blackmail them. Mm, even then, even then, there could be other people that they that they also can not only pry, but what if they also um, have like a? You don't even have to just. You don't even have to like blackmail someone. You could just steal. When someone isn't looking, that's the, 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 then they're just that. then you're just making the problem worse. And in which case, you're also uh, stealing from a society that I'm I'm sure you're aware will be armed, and thus they're putting themselves in a very dangerous position. To they can try they can try to uh, they can try to steal, but that just means that they're putting themselves in a position to be shot. Well, they can, but what if they're just very good at it? And what if they? What if they just? What if there are someone who likes to live outdoors? And you know, are we done? Are we done with the what aboutism? 
I think we need to be in hypotheticals, you know, because there's so many things I can see going wrong with this kind of a system. It, it seems like there's a lot of holes in what, what the system could or couldn't do. My big concern is, what about people who are... This is why, and here's the thing, I am very pro-gun. I'm very much against, like, I... I know there's no, like there's that. no number, there's no number of answers I could uh, give you that could satisfy you. And the fact of the matter is that there are a ton of answers. It's just that this constant uh, whataboutism is uh, extremely tiring, exhausting, and doesn't really inform you of anything. The fact of the matter is that these holes you're concerned Boy. about are significantly, significantly exaggerated under a state, under a state system of justice, which in which case is not just merely, uh, which is not subject to market competition not subject to review not subject to oversight or even uh the whims or even, not even the uh serves the will of the markets and we know that we don't serve a, we know they don't serve the will of the people because the people aren't paying for it voluntarily okay, okay. whoa 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 okay come on i mean that's it's not it's it's not it's subject to true um oversight but it's not subject that, to over, it's not subject to oversight no 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 it's not subject to true oversight which would be direct and transparent but it is definitely of subject when it's small enough to oversight there it's it's there's so many cases of kingdoms that were way more restrictive in history um and way more oppressive that it got throw overthrown within a month um or two uh by the people themselves come on you, you to say that there's no oversight especially if we were able to get it so that way like i would want in I know this is talking about not necessarily specifically the judges, but ANCAP, Pistan in general. But if we had a minarchist government that was forced to release all of, of their expenses every single year to everyone, and people were more involved with with uh, with their local and state governments on a regular basis, I don't think you can call that um, no oversight. Well, how do we get them to uh, how do we get them to uh, release their finances? We put other pressures on them. We what, um, what, what sort of pressures? Okay, so here's something I really think that would be um, a good way of putting pre pressure on them. First off, let's be honest. Most politicians that get into office get into office from large don donations from large monopolies. Now you can argue with whatever you want about you know how monopolies come, you know like whether they come from a free market or if they come from government interference. I've heard both sides from both sides of the aisle before. But regardless, they exist. Um, Monsanto is definitely one. There's a few like Koch brothers, Wilkes, stuff like that, Waltons, whatever. But at first, if we broke down a lot of oligopolies and monopolies, that would take away a lot of ability to, to buy a ridiculous amount of ad space everywhere. Now, that's just how to get there. The pressure I would put on the government, um, if I was in charge, uh, or if I could just get, it, get the system in place and see what happens after that, like setting up an experiment, one big pressure would be that um, all the na all the names of all police officers would have to be public. If we did that, I know it sounds like a. I know some people would be like, "Whoa, oh my God, what about what about undercover?" My response is, they're acting classes and disguises, and they're the government. They can lie about their ID, but the person who's going to come to your house that day and arrest you, with any other police officer. These are the people who would give force in the name of the government would all be well known. If they, if the government started being tyrannical, before the government could even and start putting in laws, those laws could heavily be um, ignored and overturned. If people said, we want to know every, the name of every cop in this town well, too. Because now their enforcement arm is now public and can be scrutinized heavily. And people, if, if nobody co co cooperates with the police, we see this in the ghetto all the time. If nobody cooperates with the police, you know, especially if they're rebellious and violent, police don't even want to enter those areas. There's like, they're like, you know, the, the police in, um, in Europe that even the ones that are allowed to, uh, to use large weapons, they're, you know, no go zones are established just like that. You get what I mean? Uh, you said several things there. Okay, I'm sorry. I gave a lot of examples, but yeah, the, you did. The, 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 the pressure I would put on would be on the enforcement arm of the government. Every well, single police officer's name would not only be public, um, 
but also um, there would be like um, pictures of them everywhere. Well, the fun, the funny thing is that in the example you provided, you've already admitted that the police are, police are legally allowed to lie to you. They can, but they, but it would be pretty hard to do that literally all the time and never, never show a badge um, publicly. In fact, if you did that without a whole bunch of um, blue suited police officers right next to you, well, it would, you look pretty, you'd probably get the crap being out of you trying to pull away some innocent man that you, they don't know is being arrested. No, not, and not only that, it would be pretty hard for everyone to continuously lie about their identity if you're an officer without someone saying, no, I, I've seen you, you're my next door neighbor. But you haven't addressed my concern that the police are still allowed to lie to you. Otherwise, uh, you're going to make it legally impossible for police officers to do undercover work. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just like all you have to do to find out if they're if it's an undercover cop is just like giving your name and badge. Uh, no, 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 no. You see, um, if someone's undercover, it can be temporary. It can be temporary where where people won't know who you are. And it, let's say if someone were to join in, like, you know, um, an undercover unit, um, they could potentially go to another town where they're not as well known. And so this way they could be in an investigation for a few months, wear a disguise, and then eventually um, have with them and police dressed in legitimate uniforms arrest someone. There are already some safeguards in place that were slowly removed by a state that, yes, because people are greedy and people are who make up the states got bigger and bigger, but they were heavily, not only slowed down, but I think the biggest problem is we don't have people willing to, you know, bring the government back to where it originally was. Well, the back to the government where it originally was, was two years after the founding, we had the Alien and Sedition Acts. Go ahead. Which were massively tyrannical. It didn't even take two years before the before the spirit of the founding was abolished. Most of the founding fathers were still alive. Okay, so that's an example of of uh, tyrannical governments getting overthrown by the people. They are subjects to. This was two years after the founding of the United States. The United States government is still in place, like <laughs> 200, 200 plus years after the after the Alien Sedition Acts. Yes, I mean, they the, were they were struck down by a Supreme Court. Thank God for that. But the fact of the matter is that it was passed by Congress and signed by the president. Yeah, but I'm saying even with all that being successful, the governments can still exist and yet be brought down quite a few pegs by the people. The, the only people. way, the only the only reason, the only recourse they seem to have is complete and total abolition, or rather. Uh, the only recourse they seem to have is revolution, which in those cases, like, there aren't very many examples of peaceful overthrowings of government throughout history. Peaceful but, revolutions. I mean, I, I like the idea of being as peaceful as you have to be, you know, but you should, but the point of a revolution is that, is that, you know, there, is that activism sometimes does change things for the better, and when that activism is ignored, but it's infringing on rights of human beings. That that it's reinforced at the point of a gun. Everything that needs to be obeyed is an, is um, enforced at the point of a gun. Well, clearly, it doesn't need to be obeyed because you're enforcing it at the barrel of a gun. Well, I mean, come on. I mean, how does the non-aggression principle work unless you can reinforce it, but with violence? If someone tries to aggress onto you first. Well, that's the point. That the uh, non-aggression principle only tells us what is and is not, what actions can be done against us that are and are not justified. In fact, the matter is like you don't need to enforce the non-aggression principle. That's not how it works. It's just simply saying that if someone does X, you can defend yourself. Yes, with a gun or violence. Correct. If exactly. they're being if they're being violent to you, well, the difference is that the government uh, is aggressive. It is aggression, and its actions cannot be justified. It is the initiation of force. Just if it's not initiating force, then it's not a government. Okay, um, I'm gonna say this. If that's the case, 
Then what's the problem with revolution? If it's a force and you have can defend yourself. It's a simple pragmatic argument that when you're re when you have a revolution, you're creating a power vacuum that just replaces one government or one violent uh, coercive monopoly with another violent coercive monopoly. Okay. Um. First off, I think there's still a lot of problems with the whole with the with the whole system that enforces all this. Um, that you were proposing. There, there's there's far more systems with the government system, which is entirely unjustified. There is no there is no ethical or cons there is no argument that justifies the existence of the state that is internally consistent. That it's practical. It's not even practical. It sucks at everything it does, except when you want to kill lots of people. I mean, that it's really good at, but I don't know about you, but mass genocide is not my thing. Not to insinuate no, that you're not to insinuate you're genocidal, just to be clear. <laughs> but <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry I said that, and I realized that someone's going to point out that I called you genocidal in the comments, so I have to clarify. I know, I know, I know, I know. You're more or less trying to say you, say that you think it'll lead to genocide. Ergo, I, I'm not saying it'll lead to genocide. I'm just saying that the government is only good at one thing, and that's killing people. Yeah, but I don't think that the government at least hasn't committed any mass genocide in the U.S. People could say things. People could give a lot of examples that I could easily debunk. Let's see. We got the. Uh, there is the uh, Japanese internment, which although it wasn't just it wasn't uh, genocide, it was the. Uh, internment of a large group of people into concentration camps which of course were much more friendly and you had a much easier time surviving in than hitler's camps or stalin's camps ever of course but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean they weren't that doesn't mean they weren't uh, justified or that they weren't concentration camps concentration camps doesn't mean a camp for killing lots of people which is what the nazi camps were these were just like keeping people away from uh, or keeping people segregated from basically the rest of society yeah but it was pretty much just in prison when you really look at it it really wasn't much else yeah but the fact of the matter is that these people the japanese committed no crimes and they were just put in there preemptively for no other reason than rampant paranoia yes which quickly died out right but the fact of the matter is that this this action should never have been uh this action should never have taken place in the first place yes but there's a lot of actions we were just talking about how the church has had pedophiles but that doesn't mean you want to shut down the church. And there's actually been rings inside of the a church run by high ups in the church that have tried to protect them. But the point of it is to change the institution, not to try to just say it can't exist. Well, the difference is that the church's existence can be justified. The same cannot be said for the state, which is by its very existence a violation of the non-aggression principle. I mean, I you might you might disagree with the you might disagree with the Catholic Church, but the fact of the matter is, like, they aren't aggressing against you. The state is aggress is aggressing against you. Well, I can see coercion. You have to interact with the state, and maybe not with the church, but I mean, why did I say maybe? You don't have to, but I can. But at the same time, there are some things that you know. Like, so there is nothing. Think? There is nothing. That the state provides that only a coercive monopoly can provide i don't want the state to be the only one who provides anything what i want them to provide is a free version of everything where there can be competition you can't have competition when you have a state providing a free version of anything first off it's not free because it's paid for by the taxpayers and secondly it's going to be you know it's going to be uh it's gonna they're gonna be a significant advantage competitively because uh any restaurant just to provide an example, that can force people into giving it money, whether or not it even provides food, is going to have a competitive advantage against uh, people who provide uh, or who sell their food regularly on the free markets. It'll uh, be like you'll be like ask people who go to the other restaurants will essentially be paying double for food. No, 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 no. I, I think no, I don't think that's necessarily true. It would have a monetary advantage. But a competitive would mean that more people not only like it but want more of it. But look at public schools. You can opt out of, of associating the public schools when it comes to going to them, just not necessarily paying for them. That's my. That's exactly my point. If you go to uh, a private school, you're not only paying property taxes for the public school, but you're also paying uh, tuition for the private school. You're paying double. 
and that puts the private school at a significant disadvantage. Well, it wouldn't put it at, at that much, I should have won, if the taxes were more fair. We have a lot of unnecessary tax brackets. Uh, let's try to imagine my society, because we are... No, 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 we're, we're going to stay on the topic here. We're going to stay... No, we have to. We have to, we have to see. We have to compare and contrast. That's the only way to be honest. If we really want it to be fair, then what you do is you abolish taxation completely and allow them to succeed and fail on their own merits. If it's good, then people will pay for it voluntarily. Not necessarily. Either. Of course they will. Of course they will. Of course they will. People are emotional. Okay, is McDonald's high quality food? Is what? McDonald's could make their food um, with at the same price, um, with less crap in it, with a lot less unnecessary fats and sugars, and still be pro and still be um, close to being as profitable. Is mono is uh, you know just because something is profitable doesn't mean it's good for you. I never said. Well, I mean, for assuming that uh, McDonald's operates in a free market environment, which it doesn't. I mean, for one thing, like high fructose corn syrup gets massive subsidies from the federal government. So, yeah, but even if they even if they started to, even if they and, and eventually, like like let's say in one year they were completely in a free environment, they would definitely have a lot more competitors that were willing to take a stab at them and lower how profitable they are. Actually, let, but me, let not, me check something up. But not by nearly as much as I think you are. Humans are manipulatable. They oftentimes like instant gratification. Um, and if you can and keep people, someone fat and stupid, you can get them to interact with you, even if they know they shouldn't. And even if they're not forced to. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Part of the reason why, why sugar is so addicting is because thousands of years ago, we were barely getting by. You know, we were barely able to even get any food whatsoever, um, and and sugar was uh, was very very rare, especially refined sugar. So immediately, if you found sugar in the wild, oh my God, you have a, such a better time like surviving. But versus now, where it's just you can buy it at the store easily. Then imagine someone gives you a really really cheap burger that you can buy anywhere in the United States and pretty much around the world, and it's just full of sugar and fat and uh, salt and low quality meats that probably has some bad negative health effects. Um, even if they were telling you, yeah, this is what we make, you would probably still not be, uh, probably uh, think to yourself, I'm still gonna have it regularly. Obesity is caused by con by convenience, an overabundance of convenience. Well, you're, assume you're assuming the effect without recognizing the cause, and in fact, there's a lot of ways that the federal government intrudes on food for example uh millions and millions of t tons of produce is destroyed by the federal government as a matter of agricultural policy it's done specific it's a great depression era regulation done specifically to uh, artificially increase the price of produce and i don't remember what the exact number is but in federal in the law there actually is a price floor for how cheap milk is allowed to get per gallon you're talk that's not not only not in every state you're talking about um you're talking about price price ceilings uh no actually price floors how uh cheap things floor, are allowed to get but price floors aren't even every government's policy either in fact that really died out heavily in new york they tried that for a long time with both price ceilings and price floors and they and they and, and, and it very quickly turned on them of course because it's a it's a terrible idea but we still have the problem with uh agricultural goods being made artificially expensive because the federal government destroys produce and goods as a matter of policy. So if you want to know why uh, unhealthy food is expensive, the problem is usually the state because, as I mentioned before, there are heavy, heavy, heavy subsidized to uh, corn products, particularly for ethanol, but it also goes into uh, sugar and uh, high fructose corn syrup while also deliberately trying to make healthier alternatives such as produce more expensive. So yes, uh, people eating unhealthy, they're only responding to the incentives that they create and the incentives are caused by the federal government. It's the same thing freaking over and over again. It's not even that the federal government is unethical, but the fact of the matter is that it just sucks at what it does. Well, so first off, most people will not rely on the federal government in an anarchist system 
that heavily. The government will be heavily um, lowered to the point where it's not really able to do stuff like that because the government, as I would put it, is, would be essentially um, a referee, unable to increase the price or decrease of the price without huge amount of law, not only lawsuits, but also um, punishments for the individuals in there. Because trying to sue the government is a bit hard, but um, it's under the system. Um, but it's definitely. Um, but if you can definitely prosecute individuals in the government, considering it's a bit of a somewhat of a free for all, you have much more success. Especially if you can say that this was done behind the behind um, people's eyes. This was not allowed to be published or even found out about. That would be the only way they could do it in a minarchist system, because minarchism demands that the government only um, make laws to protect people. Like, and when I say protect, I mean protect in that no one's able to do X to the other person. Even and if the vote, they, even they're if, not able to, they are not able to increase or decrease prices mm -hmm. of something. Even if the voters want it. Even if the voters want it, because in because in because this is the point of a constitution to take away a lot of the ability to vote on specific issues rather than individual governance. Because there are some things that should not be up to the to, to the public in the first place. They should be an individual decision. Well, we already have a constitution that was designed specifically to uh, reduce the size of power of government, and now we spend so much on welfare that uh, we have like what is it? Seventy-five percent of the federal budget is being put onto spending programs, and large percentages of it is non-discretionary spending. So the fact of the matter is, like this isn't uh, an academic example. This has been tried, and quite frankly, the idea that uh, but there are some good. Quite frankly, the idea that uh, it you won't get welfare when you continue to have democratic voters who are just going to who are just incentivized to spend other people's money because that's how the tragedy of the commons works. I think is uh, wishful thinking at best. Yeah, well, well, here here's the big problem with what you just said. First off, let's be let's be honest. America didn't start off on very um, good terms. We started off with slavery, and when we started off with slavery, we immediately gave a certain subgroup that a lot of people could feel guilty for. Um, I'm not calling black people subhuman. I mean they're a smaller group. Of course. Um, yeah, the, I. But you know what, Huffington Post? If you really want to, quote mine the fuck out of that. If it makes you feel good. Do whatever you like. I, I know they. I can know. I, can I just I'm say sorry. something real quick? What's up? Okay, so people are gonna people constantly bring up the uh, what's it called the three fifths compromise about how uh, slaves were considered three fifths a person and therefore according to the founders, slave or black people were three fifths of a person. No, it had nothing to do with uh, personhood. It had everything to do with counting. Uh, population for the purposes of determining the number of seats in the House of the Representatives. That's all the three fifths compromise was about. It had nothing to do with uh, three fifths of blacks being three fifths of the person. And the fact of the matter is, there were plenty, plenty of non slave blacks in America at the time. Uh, and that's when... all. Uh, what do you mean by plenty, anyway? What percent? I'm, and I, where I in have, America? I don't have that number off the top of my head. Uh, okay, could you get like ballpark it? Like I'd probably say like uh, oh point f or point five to one percent. This is just a guess, by the way. I I don't know. I've never. I don't think I've seen those numbers, but I do know that uh, they did exist. I mean, I, if I recall correctly, the first person to uh, or one of the people killed during the Boston massacre was a, a black person. And it was free. I know, but the one of the problems with that though is it seems like they're a red herring. And the thing is, as the black population started to grow in the United States after they were emancipated, this is a, a this is people... this is a side point, by the way. This is like a, not meant for it to be a thing about discussion. I think this is important, though. The thing is, when you okay, sure, fine. Well, let's just get to the point I was trying to make. Um, you had these black people who were emancipated, and once they were emancipated, which was a good thing, they were used by the Democrats to, it's for a victim complex. And as these people realized, if you want people to become uh, um, if they want, if you want them to be subservient, make them dependent. Like how the best way to make a dog it yields to you is to make is to control their food. Um, a dog can go out on the wild and f and fight for food, but again, 
you know, not only did they incentivize them with welfare, but also they also punished them for working harder by increasing tax, increasing taxes. Now, when you had a large group of people who were, who were able to be manipulated like this, then you could watch as these people were able to do whatever the Democrats wanted to do, um, the, the far lefters wanted to do, which includes sub subvert the government to becoming bigger and greater and to say that they were wrong would be to be a complete racist in the eyes of most people. If we had never had slavery, which I understand almost all countries did, which is something we're going to have to get past at some point. We're going to have to move past the slave days and the, and the collective guilt that was put on Americans. Um, if, if we didn't have that, it would be much harder to convince black people who are a minority in the United States and were a minor, even bigger minority in the United States back then to do that. It would be much harder to coerce whites and non-blacks to going along with whatever the black vote was um, manipulated into voting for, which includes bigger governments. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah, just uh, one thing, just uh, one quick uh, correction. Uh, after emancipation, yeah. the uh, blacks were pretty much a, uh, a Republican voting bloc for the next uh, 80, 90 years. It was only after the uh, Great Society and the, uh, yeah, after the Great Society that uh, Lyndon Johnson got the uh, black people dependent on welfare. And in well, his yeah, words, um, I'm going to get those N-words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. That Which is hilarious, isn't it? <laughs> it kind I'm... of shows their motivation, especially when you consider all these pet Democrat causes that were designed specifically to screw over black people. I mean, uh, did you know that the KKK were the big proponents of gun control? Yeah, they were also the enforcement arms arm of the Democrats who lynched black people on a regular basis once they got them to give up their guns. Yep, and uh, what's another one? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, minimum wage was designed specifically to price demo or bl to price black people out of the out of from employment. The uh, unions were designed to push uh, or to keep black people out of employment as well. And another and another one, uh, I'm trying to recall these off the top of my head, and I'm, uh, yeah, Planned Parenthood, uh, Margaret Sanger's yeah, original yeah. intention was... Oh, yeah, oh, I'll, my God. I'll let you do the honors. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Crowder, Ben Shapiro, and a whole lot of other conservatives, James Alsop. Almost every conservative worth their salt knows exactly this person. The sweet lady, I can't remember her name. God damn, Margaret Sanger. Yes, Margaret Sanger, the saints of all saints, decided we want to kill as many black people as possible, which is why we will put more Planned Parenthoods in black neighborhoods than anywhere else. Because blacks are stupid, and they'll and if you tell them that they're not ready to be parents and scare the bejesus out of them, they may just kill off their own. Yep, the yep. whole po the whole purpose of the uh, plant of Planned Parenthood, and you can like find quotes of her talking about this is black genocide. Yep, you you she was a huge supporter of Hitler's eugenics program. Was she? I actually didn't. I actually didn't know that. Well. Not like publicly, but she sent letters to Germany, I think. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> Light bulb just turns on like that. You're like, oh, oh, well, that's that. That's embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, of course, the mass media is so controlled, you'll never hear about it without doing your own research. No. Yeah, everybody feel free to like uh, double check everything we're, check we're uh, looking up or we're talking about. By all means, oh, feel free to correct us. Oh, no. For those who don't know, JFK and his it, his the Kennedys were rum runners and uh, bootleggers and mobsters. That's how they got. That's how they started up their fortune. And then they figured out that government is a great way to control people. So that's when they started getting into politics. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, something. Like I said, minarchists really don't like big government. But I think the biggest argument here is: Can the government ever be held down? enough by enough actions to, to, to not be stressing on the people all, all the time um, and keep it small you know where it doesn't constantly call re require people to constantly make it smaller no where it can it can't, it can't be long. done as I told you before like the best the best historical example of an attempted minarchist society was the United States of America 
I mean, you look at the United States Constitution, it was uh, designed specifically to limit the amount of power the United States could grab. And what's absolutely hilarious is that uh, the Bill of Rights, when that was being debated, uh, the, fe the Federalist argument against the Bill of Rights was that the Constitution, or that the government that the Constitution uh, created was so weak and so powerless that the idea that you would even need a Bill of Rights was just absurd. Mm -hmm. And two year, and then two years later, after the after the Constitution is ratified, you have the Alien Sedition Acts, which, uh, just to be clear, made it illegal for any citizen to criticize the government. And you also had uh, during the Civil War, you had Abraham Lincoln jailing journalists and suspending habeas corpus, and you had a uh, what's his name, uh, Woodrow Wilson during World War I, uh, who essentially became a dictator for the duration of the war. Those were, yeah. uh... So yeah, I, just, I just don't think, like, just from a... Even if you, like, don't recognize the ethics and the principles of uh, anarchism applied consistently, and by apply consistency I mean applied to a government, then uh, you should at least understand that you, you really can't keep it under wraps. You need a vigilant... You, the best you can hope for is a vigilant population that is consistently paranoid and consistently holding it down, which in which case you can't really have a society because everybody's spending all their time trying to hold down the state. Well, there is something else. I haven't quite figured out what it would be, but I've seen... But I've come up with small ideas that I thought, okay, that's close. But if we have something that the governments cannot force from us because it would be literally like trying, trying to like grab smoke with your bare, bare hands that they required, it would also be a good way of making sure that the, that the government didn't get too big as long as it was based on, as long as it was something that was so dear to, to, the, United, to um, the people of the, of the United States that you would have to literally convince them to want to commit suicide immediately, like put a gun to their head, not just slowly, but commit suicide in order to give up. If you have something that someone wants, it also makes it so that way that they have a hard time getting rid of you. Because that's the number one thing that we're afraid of, that most people are, like you and I, are afraid of people suspicious in the, of the government in general, is that at some point they could just say, ah, nobody's obeying us, let's just kill them all. You know? So, if you have something, though, have you, there's a show called Suits, it's, I just started watching it, and at one point, um, Harvey Specter finds out, spoiler alert, that the person he hired has, doesn't have a law degree. And so he's getting ready to fire him, but he, the guy made sure that he was um, well-known to all of Harvey's um, um, well-known associates, friends, clients, and everyone. And the second, and he said, okay, you can fire me, and I'll just go to the tabloids and newspapers and all your friends and let them know, yeah, I didn't have a law license, and you hired me. You know? So he needs them. So if you have something like that, it, could, it, it would require less vigilance and just the knowledge that if the government ever tries anything you, they can you can just refuse this at fill in the blank to what it would be haven't quite figured it out all the way though yet yeah you can't you can't really convince anyone with a, a proof or an argument that doesn't really exist the idea that uh, i understand what you're getting at that you need an, you need a kind of a mutually assured destruction such that it's really not in the government's interest to uh, become bigger but i don't think you can really make the case that such a thing even could exist since at best it's a hypothetical and at best it's a very intangible nebulous concept meanwhile the best thing we can possibly do to ensure that a government never becomes too big is to not have one in the first place we don't need it they serve no purpose i mean you ha so far i haven't heard any reasonable argument as to why we even need one in the first place or yeah okay security uh, that can be provided by a free market. In fact, people do it all the time. I remember that there's a news story about a, uh, a neighborhood that has a, a removed their that uh, removed their uh, that removed their uh, police force entirely, and they have a private security force that's actually eight times as effective. I know, publicly owned, privately managed. Mm -hmm. But it can be privately owned. It can be. Problem is, you oh. have no way of knowing that that. That, that they won't become tribalistic knowing that they are way better armed than anyone and create their own government. That's not 
that's not really uh, something that they would that's something that's not really in their interest since the moment they start doing that is the moment that they aren't making any more money that doesn't seem to be a problem they can coerce they have way better abilities to fight against an armed population even in the best case scenario they're still going to be outnumbered like 100 to 1 The fact of the matter is oh, that, that oh they're going to be going. Yeah, they're going to be going against an entirely armed population. Why would an armed security force even be necessary if the entire population is armed? How about that? I mean, everybody's going to want to defend their own property. Okay. Simple case in point number one: an organized group of highly trained individuals will always be more effective if if it's just direct combat on combat, even even if one of them is a guerrilla force. Um, then a bunch of disorganized ragtag egg um, fighters almost all the time. The, the reason why America is different is because we have militias that are oftentimes organized themselves. And sure, the people could cry, try to create their own militia, but then what's the point? What's the point of having private security? Second, and, and, you just, thing, and I think you just answered your own question there. People, uh, are, already yeah. gonna, people are already going to have their own militias, and what's the point of uh, owning guns if you're not going to know how to use it? And even then, it's like ragtag militias. They def- Ragtag militias are what defeated the, uh, are what defeated the British in the Revolutionary War. Okay. Now, now let me explain the the use. If if someone kills you, in your own house and takes your stuff and manages to not get caught, which is very very possible, whoever um, someone else should have a job of investigating and finding all the evidence because maybe your family members will try. They'll have their own lives, their own problems, and maybe they'll get somewhat close with not nearly as many resources as an organized group. And if you have um, any of you have private versions of that, not only can they just turn on you, but let's just say that they don't. Let's let's say let's say that there is this competition and let's say they're efficient at their job. Big problem. They are limited to the space that they're going to be located in. If you have like even if like a lot of people will say, well what if like the net my next door neighbor has one security company and the neighbor after that has another and another and we all have different ones in the same in the same neighborhood they're not going to be nearly as effective um if they are all spread out out and um intermixed with each other when it comes to how to how to officially protect someone um it's just strategically bad especially if you have someone who's wealthy enough who can just bribe the security company entirely to kick out all the other companies in a certain geographical area in fact, that's the biggest problem. Pri- money sometimes doesn't care. In fact, money doesn't care, and sometimes the people receiving the money don't care. If they know that there's one person who's going to decide to say, hey, I want all the land here, I already have a huge ton of money. Oh, sorry for swearing. <laughs> oh, I already God, have... <laughs> what? Now I'm going to have to dig through the uh, recording to find it. Sorry. Um, well, at least it's only let one. Just, let me just um, write that down the timestamp. Let's say, let's, okay, so let's say that they have um, a lot of money and they just want to take over a town. If that company wants to, if they were greedy enough, they could just be convinced, hey, if you do this one time, you don't need to worry about ever competing against anyone else ever. Uh, I just gave you an easy monopoly by paying you to take over this town for me. And I'll, and I'll rule it. And force people to pay you. Boom. So what you're worried about is essentially they'll act like a state. In which yeah. case, I don't, in which case, I don't see what you're. I don't see what the problem is. Okay, they'll act like a state, but there will be no safeguards. There, there are no safeguards. No there are no safeguards against the state. There are. The fact of the matter is that they already turn on people all the time. I mean, you can just go That's on. Small. You can just go on the three thought project dot com, and they'll have a story about a police officer who does something stupid like they like they fire through a closed door and they end up killing someone or a flashbang gets thrown into a baby's crib or police go to the wrong house and summarily execute somebody so okay first off first off the flashbang part is a terrible example because that could happen with private security and they and flashbangs are designed to be the least um lethal version of stunning someone they were invented um i think by private companies to sell to both private and public security so i don't think that's a very good example that's like that's literally just like you know that's the idea of perfect combat i don't even need the uh i don't even need to bring up the daniel shaver example 
Oh where boy. The, where, they, where, they, where the police just gun someone down on their hands and knees for the crime of reaching for their waistband. Wait a minute. For the crime of for the crime of looking like you're about to pull a gun, like what if the person like did it? Like there's a the guy wasn't reaching for a police. gun. I've seen the video. Okay. Send the guy me was the video. not. The guy was not reaching for a video. In fact, the matter is that the police were absolutely psychotic. Oh no no come on! You gotta send me the video because I have a feeling that that person went for their waist fast. No, not at all. The guy was literally crawling on his hands and knees. Was it he, okay? But when he reached with his hand, did he reach for it fast? No. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at the video myself. I just it doesn't. It just seems it seems very very suspicious to me. Oh, the vi the, the video the video is extremely the video is extremely unsettling. Just to warn you, that's fine by me. If I rather to be unsettled and know the truth, you know. Uh, if I can find it again, chances are it's probably been deleted. It's all right. It's just if you can find maybe even like a like some video that's not even on YouTube, and you can send it to me, you know, like in Twitter or whatever in the DMs. All right. That would be, that would definitely uh that would that would help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but anyways, um, the uh, what you're worried about happening is essentially that they become a state. Yes, but our state, our state, is designed to be kind of an infighting state. It's and I think the federal government is way larger than it should have been. It, the idea was that the states give most of the most of the power to the federal government in the first place, keeping them keeping the government from you know uh, from getting to, to from becoming monolithic. Problem is that the problem is that the state, any state, no matter how you designed it, is it's going to grow. I mean, its incentive is only to grow because they want to increase their power, or the politicians want to increase their power. Uh, departments want to increase their funding, and thus they have to cannibalize the economy more and more. Now, you can mitigate that by growing the economy, but the state doesn't really provide any products, goods, and services that people provide or people want voluntarily. Because otherwise they wouldn't need taxpayers to pay for it. So it's in so its inevitable conclusion is that it cannibalizes more and more of the economy. This is unavoidable. The point of any business is to grow larger and larger and eat up all of its competition. Then the point of the mafia is to do the same thing. The point is of any tribal group that has no essential government, but maybe a chief system at best, is to do that. This is not exclusive to the governments. But the thing is, is um, the, the the point is of American society is to design a government that is easily um, pushed back from what it will want to do, what all governments want to do, but in a way where it's where it's very effective to push it back. Where it's well, very... the difference the difference between the difference between a uh, a corporation or any organization is that the government has a monopoly on arbitration and it gives itself a monopoly on violence. So it exists in a completely different moral category. When the government tries to grow, it it cannibalizes everybody else in doing so, and it does, throw, does so through violence. The only way you could possibly avoid this is by admitting that the growth of the government is an inherently a good thing. No, 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 no. Um, a monopoly could form in an anarchist government easily, and then price everyone else from uh, trying to uh, override them. I mean, if you took away the government today, the Walden family could still have it where they have so many products at their store that are, there's some group of people that doesn't want to do business with them or some store that doesn't want to do business with them. They can just raise their prices a little bit, just a few cents more on everything in the store and lower their prices heavily on the one product and watch as that... Um, as a business that wanted to start up dwindles just from the free market alone. All right, well, speaking... if, you want to, if you want to talk about monopolies, I can easily address that question. In fact, the matter is it's not even hard. But the uh, we're focusing on the federal government at the time because uh, – or not the federal government, but the state in general because uh, you still haven't answered the question of the uh, inherent the inherent necessity and nature of the government that it will grow, it will uh, continuously what? absorb – they will cannibalize the economy, and it will continue until there is nothing left to absorb. As to paraphrase Margaret Thatcher, uh, the problem with government is that eventually you run out of other people's money. Okay, here's the reason why: universal laws enforced with universally recognized force. Now, the big thing about that is 
this takes away the need for private court systems because there are so many other things that I could see. You say that like they could they would want the most fair judge. Well, I mean, what of course, I mean, judge? it's not it's not they in a general sense, but the market, the consumers, the people who would be buy, people who would be uh, trafficking in judges and would need to and would have a economic demand for a court. Uh huh. OK, so here you go. Here's here's the big biggest problem with that. First off, they could just keep delaying um, which judge they want, because they'll say, I don't want this judge. I don't want this judge with someone who actually was the victim of a real crime until they're blue in the face. Someone would have to step in and eventually say, this is what we're going to do. So, okay, if you can't, you're, enforce... you're, you're you're distracting from the point I'm trying to make, which is that the government's uh, inex the government uh, inexorably wants to grow, and that the only way that this can be avoided is to uh, simply not have a government. No, because no, there's no, no, there's no question, there's no question that it's uh, going to grow. So the only way that this, you know, it's going to grow. There's no way to avoid this. Okay, okay. So, so you asked a little bit earlier though. What service does the government have? Guaranteed universal law. As in, you cannot... Um, well, it's not, uni it's not universal. It should be. There should it's, be some things that are universally considered wrong and, un and, and uh, enforced at the like, point of like, violence to like, not be allowed to do. Like what? Okay. What if you were one of those people who believe that... Um, uh, please please do it in 20 words or less. What? Please tell me what. To, just give me one example of a universal give, law. Yeah, I can, I'll try to minimize it as much as possible, but I'm not going to just go to your rule of 20 words or less. I'll try to make it simple and as few words as possible. Please if continue. you have someone who believes in something like 14-year-olds can consent, and they find a few other people who do that, immediately you have... A system of people who all say we want to have sex with really young people who could get mentally screwed up. Now, you can make the case, oh, well, there's, oh, there's all this evidence that says that's not okay. And they could always counter with evidence that says, well, here's why a lot of kids are just fine with this. And these would be done on impressionable people. People who don't have a whole lot of autonomy themselves because they're not emotionally mature enough. You would have to have someone say at some point, universally, this shall not be allowed. There you go. Uh, you just you just said that the uh, so uh, one example of a universal law is uh, age of consent is fourteen, or age of consent is a uh, age of consent is older than fourteen. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's another one. How about uh, Theft is not allowed. Sure. What about uh, murder is not allowed? Mm, sure, but those are pretty. Those are pretty mundane ones. There's more than that. What yeah, about? I'm trying to. I'm trying to make the point that the uh, the idea of the state enforcing universal law is absolutely hypocritical because uh, the state engages in theft and murder all the time. In fact, it can't not. What about the universal law that should be enforced and many that some people it's, have tried to argue in the past should not be a law that that uh, drunk driving should be illegal? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The point I'm trying to make is that. Uh, but that's not the you, can't, you can't you can't now. have is that you can't have a universal law under a state because it must necessarily uh, create a separate category for itself to engage in the act it needs to engage in. I mean, taxation is theft. This is unavoidable. So the fact that the state engages in taxation means that it necessarily has to violate its own laws. Okay. Um, what yeah. about in a life or death scenario when someone? Okay. So you say that like having a having the laws not being able to have caveats is bad because that's what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like you're saying that the government um, has to be can't has to be unaccountable to its own laws. It sounds like what you're saying is the government has to not have caveats. No, I'm because, saying that the law shouldn't have double standards. That's a that's different than a caveat. I don't think I don't but it sounds like what you're calling double standards are just caveats. No, they aren't. I mean, you'd have to explain how it is that taxation is justified or how taxation is not theft. Okay. 
What if it is is um what what if it is not a theft in the idea that it's a necessary um tribute that has to be given for the for for everyone to live um a peaceful life and it must only be spent on the people. And that's that's circular logic. Okay. That's okay. that's so, circular because you have taxation. Why do we need to pay taxes because it's necessary? Yes. Now, maybe an example of it being necessary is roads. If you have private roads everywhere, and you have to pay a toll everywhere, not only is that super inefficient, but what if someone is an, an absolute um, fill in the blank um, that doesn't want to allow people to, uh, on their private roads, that immediately, even if you were to say, you know, like uh, that that person might be priced out of the market, if they focus on just one person, other people might ignore it, and then all of a sudden, you were kept from one universal freedom that everyone should have, the freedom to move and, and have mobility. You took away someone's mobility because almost all houses are surrounded by roads that are primary sources of transportation. If you have that it'd be privatized, even in though, even if some, let's say you had like an ex-girlfriend, she hated you, she owned a road and she didn't want you traveling on it. And it was a long stretch of road and you would have to drive way longer to get around it and that's and that supposes that other people won't hate you now she's taken away your ability to freely move around on something that was in the past public sure roads are sometimes really sh sh crappy really made um by uh the government until the government decides to hire a business to do their roads but when it comes to the usage of it if it's private Someone could bully one particular person, take away that person's rights, and then say everyone else gets to drive on the road so long as they don't complain. And people might do it. People might just ignore the fact that you're being singled out because they get it. They get the extremely important natural benefits. So what you're saying is that uh, your so what you're saying is that our right to property must be sacrificed for your right to mobility. Why not? These Why? Are rights that... Why should you make that decision? Who what? gave you who who gave you that the, who gave you that authority to make that decision on my behalf? I might consider my property more important than your mobility. Okay, maybe I have the right to take away your ability to find new property. To even if with someone... you don't, you don't though. You don't. You don't okay. get to make that. You don't. You don't get to make that decision for me. And how so? If I own a lot of roads that circulate around a lot of your house. It might, I might be able to close all of them down to you specifically and keep you from moving to another place. Because you can't cross my roads. You can't go on my roads. You'll have to have someone get you in a helicopter and fly you out at best. Are you threatening me? That could be what I could do in an ANCAP society, yes. With 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 uh, the power of private property. You do realize that's not, you do realize that's not how private roads would work, right? How would private roads work? Let's hear it. All right, here's a here's a better question for you. Do you consider roads important? Yes. Do other people consider roads important? Yes. Do you believe that there's enough people uh, who exist that uh, believe roads are important that they would be able to pay for roads if they paid for it voluntarily? Mm, uh, probably. That's assuming that 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 depends on. Yes or, yes or no. Yes or no. There's no yes or no answer to that. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Do, do people, you already what? answered. You already answered that uh, people consider roads important, and you believe that there's enough people that uh, that there are a lot of people who consider roads important. So yeah, they'll pay for it. It doesn't even necessarily yeah, have to be owned by. It doesn't even necessarily have to be owned by one guy. It can be owned by an organization. It can be owned by a business. It could be owned by. Uh, it could be owned by say a homeowners association or a hobby and community covenant. It could be owned by. Uh, I don't know some big mega road corporation. It could even be owned With by one person on top. There's always a hierarchy, and the person on top could say, "Screw this person, yeah. I want him to not drive on my roads." Uh, Everyone, give, else... give me a second here. Yeah. Sure. Oh yeah, sorry about that background noise. Mm -hmm. Background noise. Uh, continue. Yeah. They could just say, I don't, they, they, even if it was um, by a business, the, there is one 
owner of said business who by extension pays for that road. That road could be shut down by saying, I don't want to pay for this particular person. He doesn't pay for the oh. road though. What? He doesn't pay for the road. Okay, then what, what, what did you mean when you said it could be owned by a business? It can be owned by several businesses, but the fact of the matter is that most of the things that the businesses does aren't paid for by the business. They're paid for by their customers. No, that's kind of, okay. First off, that's not true. That's like, how does, you don't, do you even know how business works? What do you know how business works? They pay for stuff with profits, but profit means you've already given the money in exchange for an item, a product, good, or service. Yes, but the fact of the matter is that the, their their revenue is dependent entirely on customers. Mm -hmm. And so here's a here's a better question: How will uh, a private road get customers they get people to drive on it so therefore the private roads incentive is to get as many people to drive on it as possible towards that end it makes perfect sense for them to uh, want to get you and me to drive on them as much and as often as possible now how the payment model for a road might work I'm not sure maybe you pay like a uh, one cent every time your tire touches one of the one of their roads so like a toll Possibly. Okay, could here's... Be, that could be one model. It could just entirely be that uh, businesses might be willing to just pay for it because they'll want people to be able to access their storefronts, and thus they pay like a subscription, like I don't know, twenty dollars a month. Okay. Yeah, but they might care about a large group of people versus a small group. And if let's say someone's anti-Semitic, and there's a small group of Jews somewhere, boom. Yes, I know Jews have a lot of money. That's beside the point. They get at um ninety percent of the market, and then they can just destroy one that um that last ten percent. More people, if they say, "Hey, if you don't want to drive on our roads, we can just say you don't get the, the ability to," uh, to the the other to the rest of the people, even if they're being singled out. Yeah, you are in one aboutism again. Let's be honest here. You lost. I lost. <laughs> I, yeah. You don't want to acknowledge. You don't want to acknowledge a very, very real scenario that very much could happen. If, the fact, scenario, if I've already explained. I've already explained that the scenario simply does not, co does not uh, cooperate with in how the incentives of the road no, it, no, roads no, it would work. It could absolutely do that. It could absolutely do that. Some people's personal. If they want to, if they want to, if they want to screw themselves, yeah, they could. But the fact of the matter is that they wouldn't be profitable for very long, and they'd be bought out by road by road companies that would do these things. They would. Uh, 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 no, no, they could just single out one particular person and watch as everyone else is selfish and says, it's one person, let's keep driving on the roads, giving them oh, all come the on. You don't think that, Oh, come on, I've already explained this. There's going to be competitors who are going to point this out. They're going to make that person who has been singled out to be a freaking uh, a martyr. Oh, and, and you don't think that they could all, that, that, that these same companies could just, that these same companies that said the opposites could make it so that way... It, um, could put enough ads out to make it seem like that person was a terrible person, make up a bunch of lies, and then watch as more people realize it's either we, we take all the time to get a new company and uh, and and not know how their services work, you know, and that will affect all of us, or just this one person gets forgotten about. Well, self-absorbed nature, we choose what we are already familiar with. In that case, why don't we just have a a society in which all businesses are run by the government completely? Since there's no arguments that that's unique to roads, that doesn't apply to every single business. That does well. It does apply to every single business. The difference is you're talking about a commodity that is way more vital to people's personal freedom than any other. You're not me, talking here's about a better, here's you're not a talking better, about burgers. Here's a better. Here's a better question. Uh, yeah. What if there is a business that's run by just the wor absolute worst neo Nazis, like a rest, like just a restaurant? And they refuse to sell anything to Jews. Mm -hmm. Okay, my response to that is, it's the same. It's the same thing as your road example. Except roads are way, way, way more vital than um, food. Than food. To get food, you have to be able to freely move. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of problems that require mobility that can only be solved by mobility. But you can take a. But you can walk on a sidewalk. Oh, well, you can take stop. alleys. What 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 about what about crossing that road? You're not even allowed to cross it, to another sidewalk. And what if that sidewalk's owned by someone? 
Who would it be owned by? The same like, people. You got. You got. You. You're. You've. You've lost, man. I've lost. Oh, I've lost because because you can't because you can't reply to this. No, I can. I I have in fact several times, and if I did, I'd just be going in circles. We've been over well, this. The, the, there are some things that are so vital to people's ability to do anything, including own a job, and go to another business. That if you take that away from an open free source, it doesn't matter if people. But it's um, not. But it's not. But it's neither open nor free. I mean, we've already established. We already know that it's not going to. That, we've already. We've already we know it's not open because most people can't even participate in the government and what participation is allowed is quite frankly a lie because let's okay. be honest your uh, democracy is crap and it's definitely not free because it's paid for by a taxpayers and given that it's paid for by a taxpayers I'm assuming you're familiar with the third party problem the third party uh, payer problem which says that they any third party doesn't really care about the quality nor the cost of what it is that's being produced. So therefore, we can extrapolate that whatever it is that the government is providing is going to be more expensive and of less quality. Okay. So first off, it is open because you're not you're you just went to a very small niche of politics, which is politics and argumentation in the government itself. You didn't talk about how libraries are open to any U.S. citizen. Are we real? You're. Are you really? You're really bringing up libraries? What? You've what? lost, man. You've got nothing. From all these things. You're, you've you've ab you're abandoning the roads because you've lost there. Now you're going to libraries. I'm not abandoning the roads. Yeah, I'm you've every, every this that. this entire discussion. You've been just been uh, changing the topic over and over again. Okay, so so it's open for anyone to use. Even if you have no money, you don't pay taxes, you can still walk on any public road you want. You can do that. You can go into any library you want and stay there until, until you know they close at a certain time of night, which they have the right to do. And as long as you don't make a disturbance, nobody's going to bother you. You stay, uh, and it's a it's a it's a whim of whoever owns it if it's privately owned. Is it the whim? Is it the arbitrary whim of when a restaurant closes, or is it because that's what their uh, that's what their customers want? They can kick you out before that if they just don't want you there, even if they're still open. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. means that you means that your uh, dollars are gonna that you're paying dollars are gonna go somewhere else. However, you might be causing a disturbance, in which case you're still being there is actually gonna be more costly. For example, being drunk at a bar. And if you're not causing a disturbance, they can still refuse you, like they did with Jim Crow. Like where they openly discriminated against black people because there were more whites, so the effects that their dollars was nothing okay i just want to point out that you identified uh state and local laws as an example of businesses discriminating i'm saying a business doesn't have to worry about about the fact that it has a universal rule put in that it cannot discriminate based on race a business has the right to discriminate based on anything it wants that is correct it does mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that does not mean they do or in fact, the matter is that that's not their inc their incentive is not to do so, and the only reason discrimination is occurred during Jim Crow is because Jim Crow was a government policy. Well, no, there was even more. There was private businesses that could that have that had the ability in northern states to serve black people that openly discriminated against them. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's why and that's why it's not done today because it's a terrible business practice. You can just think about it logically, but dollars owned by or dollars in the possession of black people are just as valuable as dollars in possession of white people. They are, but here's the thing. How many dollars is that? If you discriminate against one person and you own something very, very vital to people, way more vital than a restaurant, people, especially if it's a really small person, you know, like a, like you know, in the markets, or it's someone that you were able to say a bunch of lies and bad things about, even if they're not true. People like juicy stories; they may not have enough sympathy to just abandon and your your place of business. They'll still go to you, and you miss out on the one customer you didn't want business from in the first place, even if the only reason why is because they are black. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Do, do, do no, do you I don't. I'm trying to say it's not as hard to discriminate against um, a certain group of people because of something that's not significant than you might want to admit to it. Here's a better question. 
Uh, if a if you're being dis- if a restaurant is discriminating against black people, why would black people want to spend their dollars there? They wouldn't be allowed to. So that's a non. No, I mean, they wouldn't. They wouldn't want to. Okay. No, 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 not only that, but people who are sympathetic to black people probably wouldn't want to spend their dollars there either. It's a terrible business model. I mean, they it could do it, but they lose out on a lot of money. The fact of the matter is, you don't need this. All of this does not require a coercive monopoly to enforce. It's the simple whim of the market. Okay, first off, the point, the part that you said the second time made a lot more sense the first time. Because if you're being discriminated against, meaning you're not, you're being told you can't eat here, doesn't matter whether you whether you would give them their money or not. They already said we don't care about your money. We don't want you here. So that's a non point. Um, but I'm guessing that was just maybe a mis um, firing of words. You know, not really. I meant what I said. Yeah, yeah. You just messed up verbally. It's not like that was what you meant. You know. So we'll just put that to the side. No, I meant what I said. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so if you're being told, we don't want your business anyway, so your dollars, um, if they come from you um, and they require us to do business with you, we'd rather just not take your dollars. You probably misheard what I said. What I said was, if you're being discriminated against, you probably don't want to spend your money there anyway. Y- you, yeah, because you don't want to spend your money where you're already told you couldn't spend your money even if you wanted to. Pretty much. That's called. That's it's meant. What's in plot? What's uh, being uh, put forward is that this is a this is a damage to the vendor's reputation. That okay. even if they change, even if they change their uh, business model tomorrow, which is like you know what, uh, this is actually a really bad idea. I had a chance to think it over. Uh, black people are allowed. They'll probably just be like, you know what, screw you. Yeah, but what if you just stuck to that business practice and you got a lot yeah. of and you were able to manipulate people's emotions which are which is not that hard to do and it's been done plenty of times by businesses with no government interference to keep people coming right on back keep coming right on back all those white people all right white, so give me an example and the, and the hispanics and everybody but the blacks give me an example of a gov- of a business without government interference doing exactly as you described okay so what about the drug industry as in not Pfizer, but cocaine. Sure, they're illegal entities, but people freely associate with them, and they enjoy doing that. The drug indus- the illegal drug industry, is not a free market. It's not a free market example. It's not an example of zero government because the way the reason it is what it is is because government escalates force against the against the uh, drug lords who are then t- in turn required to es- escalate force, and that's why. It, the drug trade is as violent as it is. The fact of the matter no, is, no. without without our form of neo prohibition, uh, people would just be able to get cocaine without trouble, and they went to worry about being shot by, I don't know, the remnants of El Chapo's gang. No, 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 no. But that does no, 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 no. You completely miss the point. People who buy the drugs freely associate with them. There is no force saying that you have to buy drugs. There's only no. force if you steal from them. Or if you tip off the cops. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so you admit that uh, government is force, is violence. I never said it wasn't. I said it was necessary. Well, in that case, you're basically just admitting that the uh, initiation of force is necessary. I am. I have never hid that. This entire conversation, I never pretended that. I just right. said that there's a lot of cases where it isn't, but there are a few that are. There's not a one-size-fits-all um, solution to everything. I know I'm veering a little bit off topic here, but I think this is critically important. Uh, okay. So you understand like how the uh, non-aggression principle works? Yes. And you understand the consistency principle? I understand that consistency is normally a good thing, but sometimes reality says, screw you, there's a caveat, and you need to obey it. Well, consistency is preferable to inconsistency, and we know this to be the case because... Uh, to say that inconsistency is preferable to consistency, which is the inverse statement, is to say that it is consistently preferable. That inconsistency is preferable to inconsistent is preferable to consistency, which oh, is, of that... course, a self-contradictory statement. No, I'm saying consistency is sometimes something that can't always obey reality. But sometimes reality isn't always consistent with the things that we care about. So, so give me an example of when reality is inconsistent. Okay. Let me ask you something. Uh, how tall are you? 
I will not say this on a on a cha- on this is not something I will say on YouTube. That's fine. That's fine. You know what? All right. Just let's just say six zero. Okay, six zero. Okay, and I'm six four. Well, well, I'm not saying I am six and uh, that I actually am six four. What I'm saying is, uh, let's say that in this example I am. Our bodies would be genetically different. There are universal principles that dictate biology, and biology is again a form of reality. Yeah. Biology will will sometimes say doesn't matter that our parents were very very genetically similar to each other like you know even if we're not related it doesn't matter that we come from the same race it doesn't matter that we that our parents had a very similar way of raising our um us uh, and feeding us very similar food or that our grandparents and the parents beyond that are very similar like really almost to the same if we are born we have a very likely chance that I will be born taller than you and that my gene- and that my muscle insertion will be better than yours that my Twitch muscles will be better than yours. Well, will be different from yours, despite the fact that we have so many other things in common. Because reality doesn't always conform to consistency. In fact, there's a lot of times it's very inconsistent. That's one of many examples. I could give you examples of, um, you know, consistently if you fire the same Beretta 92 over and over again, it's going to fire the same way. But even in the, with the same design, there, there's always nuances in how they're built that are going to be different when it comes to the exact thickness, depending on how many allowances you allow when built, you know, in in their in their barrels. Um, and, you know, like uh, a home, like if you want to protect yourself from a home invasion, there are so many times where reality just does not conform to consistency. You haven't given me any examples, though. I have. Biology. Biology, I just showed you. No, you didn't. You just said you just said that we have different heights. Therefore, uh, reality is inconsistent. When in fact, you're compl- we could have different twitch muscles. We could have, have different muscle insertion, different jaw lines, a thousand different blood types, different hair colors. Despite having most of the other things in on the same, because your biology is more of an algorithm than anything else, where there is a certain amount of variation and chance. There's a certain amount of likelihood that you'll be born with something but there's never a guarantee that's a sign that so sometimes what you're saying is that so what you're saying is that reality is inconsistent because we aren't identical that's one example of something that is located in reality that shows that reality is a matter of chance not not cause and effect there isn't always a direct correlation but there is there is though i mean how tall you could possibly be is going to be determined by genetics and the amount of growth growth hormones uh, corresponding to your kind of diet and exercise when you're growing up. So the fact of the matter is like it's not it's not random. It might be like so incredibly complex and minute that you couldn't possibly calculate all the possible variables. But it's not a random process. I didn't say it was random. I said I said it was I said it was not consistent. Consistency. You would said there was you said there was chance. Time. You said there was chance involved. A lot of chance. A lot more chance than you're giving it credit for. That, we could, that it's more like poker. It's more like it's more like uh, it's more like going to a casino to know how you're gonna look by the end of it. Even if your parents are ex- are extremely similar to mine, and their grandparents, and their grandparents, and their grandparents, um, it, it's not like you know. It's not like you know a plus. It's not like it's not like a plus b equals c. Um, so almost every single time, it's more like a plus b equals c, d, or e, and it doesn't usually equal f. Okay, so what you're essentially saying is that science doesn't exist. Science does exist, but sometimes science says, here's a is science, random... Is science a spook? Science is not a spook, but it doesn't agree with what you're saying. Science sometimes says that there's a multitude of different things that can happen from the exact same events. Yeah, but those events aren't random. They don't just happen because... Uh, they don't just happen because potatoes... Oh God. Okay. So what I'm saying is, you do re- what you're what you're suggesting in terms of the inherent inconsistency of the universe uh, completely rejects all of science and reason for the simple no, fact no, that no. if it's if it's inconsistent, if reality is inconsistent, then literally thousands of years of physicists, biologists, astronomers, all of them are just wasting their time. No, I'm saying it doesn't have consistent results every single time because 
Some things will always be consistent, some things are completely random, and some things have a pattern, but no guarantee. There, they, there is a certain amount of cause and effect that will happen, but it will cause maybe different effects at different times, depending on what it is. But so far, you haven't given me an example of uh, biology. 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 Bi re biology requires cons re requires certain principles and uh, understandings of reality to be consistent in order to function. Okay, dude, it's really late at night. Um, look, uh, look, I don't have any personal animosity towards you. I really don't. I just, but I think that we've really exhausted these arguments. Yeah, I to think so as well. Yeah, I think we're at the point where we're where we're literally trying to light embers on fire. So probably. Yeah, but hey, nothing against you personally, okay? Yeah, likewise. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, no. hey, th thank you for being on. I hope you would you mirror uh, this on your on your uh, channel as well. Yeah, of course. I have the recording. Uh, let me just stop it real fast. Uh, before you go, or before I stop it, uh, mind giving your channel uh, a plug for my audience. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Filthy Frank is a really good YouTuber. Yeah, we definitely got really heated, but yeah. that's because he's not a stupid guy. He's a smart guy. Um, he, um, you can find him at Filthy Frank, um, one word on on uh, Twitter. Um, his channel is under the same name. He has a bit of a of a turtle, it looks like, for a uh, for a logo. Um, is that right? I is that a turtle for Filthy Frank? Who's that? Wait. Oh, sorry, Filthy Frank. I'm sorry, Filthy Heretic. Oh God. Oh, I'm I was sorry. Like, it's like, wait, what? I was, I was confused. Oops, sorry, there's. A, I mean, I might, pl I might plug your channel. Channel, so I'm sorry. <laughs> filthy heretic is who I'm talking about. Yeah, it's a lizard. Yeah, it's a lizard. I really need. <laughs> I probably need to do a redesign because this is like the third time I've heard turtle. Uh, yeah. Well, the I, I'm sorry about the whole Frank thing, but you know he's a meme, so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so but I meant, I meant like plug your channel for my audience. My channel for your audience? Yes. Oh, okay. My name is Arcean. Now everybody knows this, so if you hear me on other streams, I've been on the Andy Worski show a few times. I've been on Ayla Wife with a Purpose this stream. They call me Jeremy because that's my first name, and my my whole name and everything is already public, so don't worry about that. But I still use the character Arcean, which is the angel of objectivism, on my channel, kind of like how Sargon of Akkad is Carl Benjamin, and everybody already knows that. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a minarchist right wing YouTuber, and I recently um, just finished. And tomorrow I'm going to be publishing it, um, part three of the importance of taboos and shame, where I talk about how not everything needs to be regulated by law, but how shame is definitely an important part of human society that has kept humans together for a long time. So thank you uh, for being with me tonight. You're welcome. Uh, happy to be here. Yeah. Hey, uh, have a good night. Okay. Uh, yep. You too.